Miss uh, Kat Drage. Uh, Kat is in the final stages of mesothelioma. She is unable to be with us tonight. She had wanted to come along and listen to this, but I am aware that she is watching us online tonight. So I want, I'm about to commence her statement. I am Kat Drage and I have mesothelioma. I was diagnosed eight years ago when I was 52 years of age. On the 16th of January 2023, my oncologist, Dr Melvin Chin, advised me that I have several weeks left with my beloved husband, family and friends. To date, I have survived six rounds of chemotherapy, four treatment trials and radical surgery in my fight against this disease. It is surreal that I have now run out of treatment options, experimental or other. I believe this is due to lack of belief or care that there is an epidemic of non-occupational asbestos diseases in our community. So there is no interest in providing dedicated funding to improve treatment and indeed find a cure for my disease, mesothelioma. For a wealthy and prosperous state like Western Australia, this is unacceptable and must be corrected. The Insurance, Company, uh, the insurance Commission of Western Australia, ICWA, initially provided $600,000 per year to the National Centre for Asbestos Disease Research, NCARD. This is reduced to approximately $100,000 per year and I understand the funding is likely to be reduced to zero in the near future as occupational exposure has declined. This is simply not good enough if we consider that last financial year, ICWA generated a before tax profit for the West Australian Government of $79.4 million. The year before it was a profit of $1.6 billion. Great efforts by unions WorkSafe and the West Australian Government had led to, have led to a reduction in workers contracting mesothelioma but unfortunately there has been little interest in investing in the medical research to treat and cure this ferocious and fundamentally West Australian disease for those who will still go on to develop these entirely preventable diseases. Melita Markey, the Chief Executive Officer of the Asbestos Diseases Society of Australia, Inc., ADSA, advised me that the incidence of my disease is in fact growing, particularly among women and children who are exposed to asbestos, like me, during home renovations. We were not exposed through our workplaces and there is limited recourse available to us against the companies who manufacture dangerous asbestos-filled products unless we are able to prove how our exposure came about. Sadly, the first case of mesothelioma in January 2023 for the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia is a woman in her mid-50s. This lady is employed in a job she loves, like I was. I worked for the WA Police Force for many years on significant cases, including the Macro Task Force, as an analyst. This lady's asbestos exposure occurred during renovations on the family home when she was a child. Melita Markey advises me that in this case and others, they are working with the parents of sufferers, often aged in their 80s, to determine if, where and when renovations took place. While there are now some warnings out there, now they're about dangers of asbestos, it is too late for many of us who have been non-occupationally exposed to this ticking time bomb as children and young adults. We do not have unions or regulators to fight for us. Only the Asbestos Disease Society and some dedicated and caring politicians in our WA community. Many women and children are still being exposed today through life circumstances. Sometimes an asbestos riddled house is the only home they can afford or offered by the Department of Housing or worse still, are completely unaware the house they have rented contains this deadly product. Others may simply not know what they are dealing with when renovating their house. The significant costs of professional removal, as well as ignorance of renovators or trades taking shortcuts, also contributes to the exposure of women and children. Most worryingly, the sheer volume of ageing asbestos in our community, or being dumped in our environment, increases the risk and incidence of exposure for many Western Australians. It is important to remind members of parliament that Western Australia was home to the CSR Whitnoom Blue Asbestos Mine, the Point Sampson in our state's north from where raw asbestos was transported to Fremantle and other ports, and two James Hardy manufacturing plants pumping out asbestos building products until the mid-1980s. This is the cause of WA having the highest incidence of a mesothelioma in the world. In a global context, the deaths from mesothelioma cancer in Australia exceeded deaths from, September, from the September 11 attacks on the New, the New York World Trade Centre in 2001. And we don't have a memorial either. One of the questions the Asbestos Disease Society asks, and since my diagnosis I do as well myself, 
is why was there no product recall from the manufacturer of asbestos products? Or in the absence of this, why were we not told and offered financial assistance from the manufacturer for us to remove asbestos-based products safely from our holiday home? This would have saved me and so many other women and children who are now losing the battle with mesothelioma cancer. It is ironic that when you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, you are told to make the most of the time you have left. The idea being you take holidays and spend time with friends and family. I have done some of this over the last eight years, but my focus has been to support the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia in their 45-year quest to save the lives of people like me with mesothelioma. In the absence of dedicated research funding, the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia fundraise for medical research and financially support clinicians to specialise in mesothelioma and other asbestos-related disease treatment. My friends and family have supported me in my dedication to these fundraising activities in the hope they would save my life and the lives of others. From my perspective, the only way forward is for immediate, dedicated and ongoing funding for mesothelioma and dust disease researchers so that they can have the same resources as HIV and COVID researchers. Look at the difference that, was, that has been made for these deadly diseases. We cannot undo the exposures to asbestos that have already occurred, but we can and must invest in the research and trials to find new treatments and a cure. Over the last few years, the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia raised over $360,000 to specifically fund a PhD scholarship for an oncologist clinician scientist and have started fundraising for another respiratory clinician scientist in Western Australia. It is thanks to the Asbestos Disease Society that I have been able to have an oncologist specialising in mesothelioma cancer treat me over the last four years. This has made such a difference to my care. Personally, I have fundraised close to $50,000 for research. In November 2022, despite my declining health, I raised $26,000 thanks to the support of my family and friends. This funding will be put towards developing the CRM system to enable the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia the National Centre for Asbestos Disease Research, NCARD, and international scientists to data mine, analyse and learn from nearly 50 years of asbestos disease epidemiological data held by the Asbestos Disease Society of Australia. I am hoping that the West Australian Government will also assist the Asbestos Disease Society by funding the cost associated with digitising the thousands of older paper-based patient records for research purposes. I'm not afraid to die but I feel robbed by my death, that my death and that of those before me and those to come were and are entirely preventable and should be treatable and curable. I hope that you take the desire of people with mesothelioma to live seriously. My journey has been hard at times, but the most painful thing has been seeing the grief in the eyes of my family and friends. Please provide the funding for medical research for the treatment and survival of mesothelioma and other asbestos dust related diseases so that no other victim or family must go through this. Yours sincerely, Kat Drage. And I thank Kat for her, uh, her statement and I, I sincerely wish her well in these final days. The Honourable Brad Pettit. Thank you, President. Um, I rise tonight to make a statement about